let's talk about 10 reasons why you should be using D5 Render in 2025. Make sure you stay to the end for a chance to win a free 30-day pro trial to D5 Render. First reason, easy to use. Okay, so I've got D5 open here. And just logically, like as an architect or designer, the UI, super slick, super easy. I mean, within an hour, you can have a really good idea of how to use D5. Like, this is very similar to all the software we're using, like Revit or Rhino or SketchUp. We've got our scene list, right? We've got our layers, our object outliner and then all the settings to just tweak things like it, it's a very like natural simple thing to use and i feel like a lot of people underestimate that when it comes to software like personally and i've talked a lot about this but i hate using 3ds max because i personally it, it seems a little clunky everything feels kind of like ugly i hate the ui it doesn't feel like i can easily just pick things up but d5 i open it up and everything's pretty logical the icons make sense the hotkeys make sense so a huge win there next thing is compatibility so if you don't know this d5 actually works well with sketchup 3ds max revit rhino archicad blender c4d and vectorworks and this is actually going to give you the live sync plugin so if you've never seen this before i've got it open in revit it's a little plugin here that creates a live bridge anything you edit or model in your source app edits in d5 so you can easily design and render at the same time you can sync cameras lights you can even export out geometry works really well and i love that it supports all these different tools the next big thing is pricing okay d5 render comes in three different flavors we've got community which is free we've got pro which is 30 a month or 38 a month if you pay monthly and then teams and i'll talk a little bit about why teams is so amazing but we're talking about 38 dollars a month for a real-time render engine with all these different assets in here if we were to just compare it to some competitors like lumion we're talking about a thousand dollars a year for the pro version and let's just do some math we're talking about 83 dollars there right so we're talking about double the price for lumion enscape fixed seat you know you could do 46 annually or 84 dollars a month floating that's 80 dollars a month for enscape the only one who's got a slight edge is twin motion twin motion is free until your company's making over a million dollars in revenue but if it does, and let's say you're working at a firm or something, and that's where the, where the million dollars comes from, still 445, and that is about $38 a month. So that's where you can kind of see where D5 pricing is kind of competing against that. But overall, nicely priced software. I mean, you could use the you could use the community version. You'd be fine. You'd just be missing out on assets. Next feature, in my opinion, which I feel like people don't appreciate enough is just all the AI stuff that's in D5 that's not gimmicky. I feel like when we hear AI in software, it doesn't really add much to the software, but D5, I feel like they understand what we need. So we've got, you know, the D5 AI enhancer. So here's a rendering before AI enhancement, and then this is after. You can see, huge upgrade, looks insane, right? Then there's all like the little things. There's like the material generator, right? And then there's AI atmosphere match. So look at this. We've got the texture map generator. So what this means is you upload a diffuse map or a color map and it will generate the normal roughness and AO. That's huge because everybody hates making those types of maps and it does it quickly. The AI enhancer, which we just talked about, which is amazing. The ultra HD texture enhancer. So you upgrade, you upload something low quality. Let's say like a 512 by 512 texture make it look 4k look at that looks beautiful there's make seamless which takes any tiling texture just makes it seamless in one click text to 3d ai atmosphere match you upload a reference photo it makes it look like that reference photo then there's d5 high which is very cool kind of like image to image gen ai system this is kind of in beta so you may have not heard much about it but then there's ai in painting so you can in paint skies foliage people and then the motion blur function, which is part of the AI post-processor. So like, these are a lot of great features that all live within D5 to make your life easier and make you a little bit more productive, you know? And it's just like conveniently located in, you know, logical places. And like, that's, that's why I can't stress enough about how easy it is to use because it's like, it makes sense. It's not like things are hidden in like weird sub menus. It's like, no, everything's right in front of you. The next thing I wanna talk about are the assets, okay? I feel like nobody has a better asset library than D5, okay? And if somebody does, let me know. But look at this. 
we're talking about 3D models. We've got over 12,000 models here and we have over 2000 materials. Okay. So you don't need a subscription to like substance or polygon. You can just use whatever's in here. And like, if you've watched my videos before, you know that like 95% of my materials are coming from the asset library because it pretty much has everything, right? I deal with a lot of like metals and stones and glass. So I just go to the D5 library. I find what I need, right? It's very easy to navigate. And then I just grab it and then I modify. Like all these materials for my scenes happen to be D5 assets. And that's why I can't edit them because they're D5 materials. So love how easy that is. And it's just like built into it, saves you money there. And that goes back to the pricing, right? Like if I don't have to buy assets or textures or materials, you're saving money there. So I think this is incredible. And it, you know, the other thing to the credit is this is always growing, right? It's not like you just get this asset library and that's it. Like all these characters were just added like a week ago. And here's the interesting thing. And this is a whole nother reason why I really love D5 is they actually listen. Um, so for my work at, we deal with like a lot of, you know, hospitality projects, you know, offices, healthcare, spas, you name it. So one thing we were missing were just like people in lobbies and like hotels and like that kind of aesthetic. So we contact D5 and we say, Hey, these are the assets we need. And within a couple of weeks, we get everything. So this is brand new and this is all based on a request. And I feel like a lot of the features and, you know, any bugs that are there often get resolved in the next update. So this is one of the reasons why I, I keep talking about D5 because I feel like they're one of the very few companies that listen to their users and implement. So it's one thing to just be like, yeah, yeah, we got it. We got it. But like they follow up and this is proof. And this isn't the first time, like a lot of the, um, the construction assets, at least the vehicles, that was something that we also requested. And here we go. You know, can't complain about that. So the next thing I want to talk about is the team workspace. So you may not have this on your, your UI if you pay for pro, uh, because of the firm I work at, we have lots of users. We need to do multi-user collaboration. I'll talk about that in a moment, but we get a team function. So check this out. The teams component, and I feel like this isn't talked about enough is D5 is one of the only real time render engines that has a multi-user editor functionality. So that means you can have three people working in the same D5 file on different scope all working and then syncing to the same file. So that's what you see here. You've got interior designer, exterior, and someone doing effects all syncing to the same model. This is great for larger projects. So it's not just one person is the visualizer. You can have all these people contribute. Nobody else does this. This is great for like our types of projects, which are just massive. But additionally to this, because we're such a large firm and we have standards and we reuse a lot of the same materials, right? There is a team library. So the asset library, you can actually import firm standard 3D models and materials. So there's no reason for someone to keep making the same glass because the same glass we use on most of our projects, we can just do that once and they just grab it. It's like a great way to unify standards. Uh, the other cool thing is like, you know, kind of like in Google slides and Google docs where you, uh, you tag somebody, you can also tag someone and say like, Hey, can you, Hey, can you fix this area? So all that functionality is built into teams. Um, so if you are like a firm and you need, you know, to work and collaborate with people, that's what this guy is uh, right now, since I'm on my own personal account, you don't see anything here. But you can see it supports a NAS, Dropbox, OneDrive, and SharePoint, and all the assets would appear here. It's very similar to like the local library, but it's just shared with all the people in your organization. So very cool. The other thing you could do with that is like any material you have, all you have to do is just instead of adding, instead of adding add to local, you would hit add to team. So that's an extra button you may not see or have if you're on pro. Or the other thing that makes D5 great is just like the quality, like out of the box. After you, uh, you know, spend some time and you get your views done and your lighting, your materials, it just looks great. Now we, now that we have the path tracer, right. And we have another way of rendering, right. We can literally just go here and accumulate. We're going to get something that looks super photorealistic and it doesn't take that much longer than a typical rendering. So we've got the path tracer and look at that. That looks great. Combine that with an AI enhancer and you've got a photorealistic rendering in less than a minute. It's, it's just crazy. And I just love that 
again, this is all rendered in real time. So like if your scene looks good, you fly around anywhere and it's going to look just as good. Like it's, you know, I can't underestimate that. And this is actually one of the issues I don't want to like crap on Lumion, but you know, my background, if you don't know, I used to use Lumion for over a decade, um, used twin motion for a long time, Enscape. And one thing I didn't like was how different the viewport looked from the actual output. So in Lumion, you would have to make an effect stack. You'd have to like know which effects to use, enable them. And then when you render it out, it looks very different from your viewport. And that was kind of annoying because like here I've got everything like dialed in in D5. And then when I hit render, it'll just look, you know, slightly nicer. Like it, everything stays pretty much the same. And that's, that's a really nice feature. So now that I have this all dialed in, I can fly around my project. It looks photorealistic. You know, if the client wants to like do a little walkthrough, we can do that because everything's rendered in real time, right? And we can even, you know, save everything to these hotspots here. Then the next thing, which I love about D5, is some real-time rendering engines don't have like animated entourage. So in D5, you can actually just simply with a path tool, you can create character paths, vehicle paths. So check this out. I grab this and I grab, let's say a bunch of small cars. Grab this Jag, grab this Audi. So I've got a bunch of cars selected. I can literally just draw out a path like this and the cars will start driving. And like, I can make a nice little animation of this and that took no time at all. And it's all non-destructive. So like, if I'm unhappy with this, I can just edit the path again. I can add more models, subtract models, play with the density, make it go both ways. Like this is really, really simple to use. And you know, this is super harsh because I didn't add any smoothness and you can see overlap. The point is that didn't take much time at all. And like, when we talk about these tools, we have to think about like the real world where you've got all these crazy deadlines. You've got a lot of pressure. You just need like fast results and you just need to go, go, go and not be limited by your tools. Right? The last thing that I really love about D5 render is the scene express. So if you don't know what this is, think of this as the SketchUp warehouse. Users upload their scenes. You can download them. You can edit them. You can dig around. You can understand how they use settings. You can export out some of the materials or objects to your own local library, and then you can reuse it. So it's just like a learning resource that's completely free. And every single week they're adding more and more projects, even like the projects they use for their trailers, they upload it for you. So you can see how like a professional D5 render artist builds a scene. You know, if you watch my channel long enough, you see that I use these scenes all the time because it's just like a great way to get variety and just see, okay, this is how they handle the exterior. I really like these light settings. Let me save the presets to my own library. And like that's another thing. And that could be a whole point itself, the ability to save out presets. So if you've never done that before, and you should be <laughs> like, let's say I really like this, this light setup. I can actually just do this create preset. And because I have a, a team account as well, I could do a team space. But if I do that, I can create a folder with a thumbnail, a name, and I can say, Hey, these are my exteriors. These are my interiors. And this is like my own standard. So I can use this on every project if it makes sense. And if I'm really confused and I don't know how to do any of this with lighting or HDRIs, I can just go to D5 studio, which is this guy and go to D5 curated. And I got all these different presets. Like amazing. So if you've never used this before, you just double click and it will apply the settings either via the dynamic sky or an HDRI and give you the settings. It'll even tweak some um, of your effects that even tweak some of your post-processing. So really, really handy. And it's just like a great resource. So I feel like D5 curated and the scene express kind of fit in the same category of just helping you get started faster. So this one doesn't want to play nice. So let me try this. Okay, there we go. That seemed to work. I could try this. Yeah, and there you go. You could see it's changing all the effects here. Like it's adding a, uh, a lot. It's changing the exposure. I'll switch back just so you could see the, uh, the difference. These values change. The environment changes. And we'll do a night, just something super drastic. Yeah, you can see now this is an HDRI. So again, there's like one or two clicks. And there you go. Like you don't need to know every single setting to tweak D5's figure it out for you. So like I said earlier in the video, if you made it this far, I do want to give you a free 30 day trial to D5 Pro. 
since I'm a certified D5 instructor, I get these codes for free. This isn't a sponsorship or anything. It's just like a free perk I get. Um, so all you have to do is just comment on the video below and say like what your favorite feature is of D5 and then shoot me an email of a rendering that you're working on. And I'm going to include it in a video where I break down how to improve your renderings. I'm putting together a bunch of different images from, from different students, either from the Academy or YouTube students. And I'm just going to tell you how to improve the rendering. It's kind of my gift to the community. So be sure to do that. And then just to recap that comment below and just shoot me an email with a rendering. Anyways, if you like this content, leave a like subscribe and I'll see you next time.